How do you grow like a VC backed company without taking on investors? Do you want to create a lifestyle business, a performance business, or an empire? How do you scale to an exit without losing your freedom? Those are the questions, and this show is the answer. What's happening, everybody? This is Ryan here. I am going to go through my top four AI predictions for 2024. This is brought to you by Superhuman Revenue, which is a newsletter where I share cheat codes, tips, and tools on how to become superhuman by leveraging AI. All right, let's get into it. Number four, this will be the year that we go from effectively what went to open AI to open source AI, right? So there's going to be an explosion in the open source area. Tons of money was poured into this. Once we <laughs> open AI went through the five day hiring and firing of their CEO and effectively what people are going to do is start leveraging this as opposed to the general use large language model to private use cases with open source models. I actually interviewed the founder of Weaviate on air, gave me amazing perspective on open source AI models, what the capabilities are. Hugging Face is another example of it. So you're going to want to keep an eye out for that. All right. Number three. AI advancements in video will mimic the image advancements in 2023, okay? So if you look at images at the beginning of 2023, Dolly was meh, all right? You had Midjourney, which was good, but you know they had the whole finger thing where they would have six, seven, nine fingers, things coming out of people's heads. So there's really big challenges with it. Now you look at the beginning of 2024, how far that's come over a 12 month period. It's absolutely insane with what's possible, okay? The same thing's gonna happen with video. My prediction is we are gonna start having hyper specific use cases where individual videos will be customized to individual people. Runway ML is doing amazing things in this area. Pika Labs is doing some pretty cool things too. We're going from text to video generation and it's gonna be light years ahead at the end of this year. It's gonna get really weird, okay? Number two, we are going from GPT to agents, all right? So just to describe what that means is ChatGPT, for example, is really, really driven on by how good you could prompt as well as fine tuning. But let's say, let's just focus on the prompting right now. If you look at it from a foundational pyramid perspective, there's prompting, then there's GPTs with the GTP T store is about to be released. Sorry about that tongue twister. And then on top of its agents. Why you look at that top of the pyramid as agents is because if you look at it, prompting are the instructions. GPTs are specialized instructions for specific workflows or use cases. Agents are a collection of automated work processes that the GPTs are going to provide. My thought is that OpenAI is literally providing this GPT store to harvest from the crowd the best possible use cases that are the most attractive. It's going to take those and turn those into agents, and it's going to string together different use cases and different applications to make that possible. It's already being done right now. However, there's challenges with agents, and that is going to get rectified. It's going to get better and better. You're going to see more and more of them, and things are going to get weird. It's going to be like, if you think about Jarvis, really, with what happened at you know, Iron Man and how he would just say, I want this done, this done, this done, this done. And it would all get done for him. All he's doing is really identifying the outcome. And then Jarvis was doing all the work under the hood. That's what the agents are going to work like. All right. Number one, all right. AI, this is my number one prediction, right? And I'm starting to see it already. There was a study done by Amazon that went under the radar in November. And basically, they interviewed almost 1,400 different companies and close to 3,500 people. And some of the key takeaways are that the top priority for those organizations is we're shifting from AI into product to AI into people. All right. I am a huge believer with that. Which was I created the sales AI accelerator so that you become superhuman, specifically within sales by leveraging AI capabilities. Now, if you look at this study that Amazon did, there's some really unique takeaways, okay? Um, the interesting thing about people is the number one area that was focused on were developers or coders. Do you know what number two is? The number two area that was being focused on or that they said the biggest opportunity and gains were is sales and marketing, okay? And so they're really looking at that as a key area, key job functions should say that is going to be transformative. And so one of the unique things, and this is, you are not going to want to miss this. Listen to me right here. This is one of the biggest unique things that if you haven't heard me talk about it 10 million times and have been ignoring it, um, is going to be really eye-opening. But effectively, within this report, I don't know, it was like 30 pages, one of the key elements that they identified within that study is it's close to 
of organizations don't know how to implement and train on AI. Okay, that's the employer side. You look at the employee side, 79% of the employees don't know how to obtain training, right? Um, I know it feels like this is a self-promotion part of it. However, a little bit of it is, but more importantly, this is for you, whether you look at what I am doing in this space or other people. If you are educated in this area, this is, I'm not making this up. Organizations literally say they will pay people 43% more in sales and marketing that have AI enabled skills. 43% more. That's like you have a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollar salary. You get an eighty six thousand dollar raise for the year just based on the fact that you took three, four hours to really truly understand AI and how you can integrate it in your job. That is mind blowing to me, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. So, why don't I share with you those top four insights? I was super excited. I took some time off with my family, like over break, and wanted to recharge. I shut off social media for about a week, which was amazing. Um, on top of it, too, didn't really create any content. Wanted to focus on my family and loved ones. But like as I was sitting here, I just did a couple other interviews. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do a solo episode and share some of the things that I'm super excited about. I'm factoring this into my planning. There's more that I'm going to share with you that I'm really excited about this year. And I am going all, all, all in on this. So you are going to see some amazing things as a part of the podcast, as a part of the content, as a part of of the accelerator that I've created in other areas too. So you're not going to want to miss it. Uh, Thanks for being on the show. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Thank you for checking out the Scale Up Show. My mission in life is to help founders and revenue leaders avoid all the pain and suffering in revenue growth so they can flip it and create a life of their own design. So if you enjoyed this show, please like, review, share it on social, and more importantly, just share it with a friend. Share it with someone that you think could learn and benefit from what you heard on today. But the more we get the message out, the more people we could help, the bigger the impact we make, and the bigger the community gets, which helps everybody. So once again, thank you for being a loyal listener. I appreciate you and look forward to seeing you on the next episode.